to remind us of what the Lord said. That Tuesday night, and we were in that kitchen praying. Everything that God spoke to us that night came to pass. And when, when, when God speaks, church, can stress this enough. When God speaks, it behooves us to pay attention. And not to take anything that he said lightly. God warned us of many things that night. But the thing that sticks out to me in particular is what he spoke to us personally. God warned us of the massacre that was to come that took place in New Zealand. Sister Joyce, they all y'all were sitting out of here. And I came out here and I told you, and I said, some of y'all sitting in here should have been in that kitchen. Y'all sat out here. And let all that was going on in that kitchen go on. Instead of coming in where God was. Jesus. And I stood up here and I warned you and I said, God warned us of a massacre. After the massacre, it would be a domino effect. That after this, God said, he's going to move his hand in Africa. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God specifically came to specific places. Told us what was going to happen. God did it. Heard in the news just the other night that Africa had a cyclone that came through there. At the time, the death toll was 500 people. Heard today that the death toll is up to over a thousand people. It behooves us to pay attention to the prophetic alignment. To not take for granted what God is speaking to this house. Not to sit like these are going, not to be on alert. Because yes. this is the beginning yes. of all that we're getting ready to see. I read this. I had to write it so I could remember. Amen. The Lord said, I've chosen you this night. I've chosen you to see and to hear and to intercede. The Lord said, because they have become polluted. They have a form of godliness. But they have denied my power. They have chosen to assemble the way that they want to assemble. And not as I have commanded them to assemble. They only have their own agenda in mind. And not mine's. They're allowing my people to suffer at their own leisure because people rather enjoy themselves than to work in my kingdom. My wrath shall be upon these ungodly gatherers that gather in my name but not to exalt my name. The Lord further went on and warned us, said, there is a spirit of delusion that has entered into the churches. And we would love to blame the devil for everything. But God said, I sent it. I caused them to believe a lie. He further went on and said, the lie that I have caused them to believe is that they're actually saved. Preachers are being used by a lying spirit that has been sent to deceive them that they might be damned for they love not the truth. Even those who were once in love with truth has turned a deaf ear to the truth. They've turned their ears to fables 
have taken the eyes off of me and have replaced me with their idols. I'm no longer their God. I've become an option for them. And I'm no longer a necessity. I'm used for their convenience. And I'm no longer their desire. I've forsaken many of the churches in America. And I will use the issues of this nation and the surrounding ones to bring this people to their knees. And I've chosen this house this night to reveal my will and to anoint and to appoint intercessors that will watch as well as pray. Many claim to be watching, but they aren't praying. And many claim to be praying, but they're not watching. I said watch as well as pray. Hands lifted. The opportunity that I get, I will remind this house of what we've been anointed and appointed to do. And we will not cease to stand on God and to watch as well as pray. Watch means to be alert. Feel the shift in the climate. See that the seasons are changing. Sam in the church world. Sam in the nations. And see that all God has warned us in the scriptures are coming to pass. Jesus said, Many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. The spirit of Antichrist. Since I want you to hear me today in the spirit. The spirit of Antichrist. Even though the Antichrist will be a man, the son of perdition. But before, before it can ever be a man or the man, we must first recognize that the spirit of Antichrist is just that. A spirit. Looking for one man, the Bible said there are many antichrists. And even though climate is being set up for the one man to reveal himself, the one that Paul in Thessalonians warns us about, the one that is lawless, the one that will sit in the temple and ask God and will defy everything that is God and he will sit in the temple in the house of God as if he is God and people will begin to worship him and here's the kicker saints the Bible said that he will be able in the book of Revelations to call fire down from heaven he will do great signs and wonders. He will even put up an idol and he will have power to give life and breath to the idol. You don't understand the demonic wickedness that the church is up against. The Bible said he will be wounded but will not succumb to the wound. spiritual wickedness and he will usher in a one world rule but not only a one world rule but a one world religion but the spirit that proceeds coming in the revealing of the Antichrist it's a spirit of delusion 
Saints, Jesus. everybody cannot be right. It's a spirit of delusion. The spirit of delusion leads us first spiritually into religious unity to set the leveling plane for the one world religion. So what it first does is say that regardless of your denomination, regardless of your beliefs, we're all serving the same God. We're all worshiping the same God. And it doesn't matter what you believe. Nobody's wrong. We're all right. I might be Pentecostal. And you might be Baptist. But we're all right. Come here, Minister David. Dan, uh, Daniel. Come here, Minister Vaden. Come here, Minister uh, Brother Jeffrey. I want us to stand in a line here. I want to show you what he does first spiritually before he ever does it naturally. He'll give me a set of rules, beliefs, and systems. And I do everything my way. And God, so we say, mm. has given him his own rules, beliefs, and systems. And then God, so we say, has given him his own beliefs, my Lord, his rules and his systems. And God, so we say, has given him his own rules, beliefs, and his systems. And here's the danger that God is working through all of us. Mm. God gave all of us what he gave us, even though it's all different. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So what they've done is they've given God a bipolar and schizophrenic uh -huh. spirit. Uh -huh. And I'm not wrong, and he's not wrong. He's not wrong, and he's not wrong. Mm. He's not wrong, and he's not wrong. Right. And we're all leading the people to that one God. Yeah. Yeah. It's the biggest deception. Right. Yeah. Sounds foolish. Yeah. The biggest deception that there is. So now I preach not to offend him. He'll preach not to offend me. And he'll preach not to offend him. And he'll preach not to offend him. And now we all go unoffended, unchallenged, unchanged, leading God's people. However we want to lead them. And we all teach whatever we want to teach them. And now we're told not to say nothing hmm. about it. The apostle said, sister, earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. You can't believe everybody's right and then quote Ephesians 4 and 5. There's one Lord. One faith. One baptism, one God and Father of us all. But you can't operate under the one God with multiple different types of faith. We all must speak the same thing, mind the same, walk by the same rule. We must be perfectly joined together. The same judgment. You cannot have diverse types of doctrines. No, sir. Teachings. You say everybody's right. It's the spirit of delusion. 
and is setting a level plane for the one world religion. And many people think that the one world religion means that they're all going to be following that one particular religion. Although who spoke to me last night and said, everybody won't be Catholic. And everybody won't be Muslim. But that one world religion will be a religion that is intermingled. It will be an interfaith movement. My Lord Jesus. Every person of every faith of every persuasion will be intermingled into one. And will say no matter what God you call him, or what name you call him, no matter your denomination, no matter what it is, it is the same God. I love you. That, my brothers and sisters, is delusion. Yes. Amen. It's a strong delusion. There's only one way that is right. Isaiah said, in that day, a highway shall be there. Yes. And a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. Straight is the gate. Yes. Narrow is the way. And leadeth to life. Yes. Only be few that find it. Yes, sir. And walk therein. Brothers and sisters, there's never been a time that we need to hold on to what we got. Amen. Amen. The time is now. Amen. Don't be moved. Thank you, Lord. Be not tossed to and fro. Thank you, Jesus. By every wind of doctrine. Yes. That these cutting men have conjured up. To seduce us, to trick us out of our inheritance. In the last days, there will be doctrines of devils that will be preached by seducing spirits. Seduce means to cause something to be attractive in order to lure you into something that is foolish inappropriate in layman's terms not right Amen. 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 spirit of delusion is trying to get a hold to the souls of people and brothers and sisters while the spirit of delusion is trying to attract we got to do work to pull people out Amen. Of this delusion. Jesus. Jesus. We're having a meeting this evening after service, and one of the biggest things we're going to talk about is evangelism and outreaching. And why it's so important for those that believe to tell your loved ones that are sitting in some Baptist church, some Muslim mosque. Some other religion that is not serving the true and the living God to get them out of there. It's imperative that we save as many people from the destruction oh, man. that is coming upon this world. In the days of Noah, it was war. I said, standing all over the building. In the days of Noah, it was water. The days of the Son of Man, it's going to be fire. It's going to be an unquenchable fire. That no man, no woman, no fire department in this world is going to be able to put out. It's going to be a fire that will destroy the waters. There's nothing that will be able to extinguish it. And our duty and our job is to warn the people of this destruction. Those that don't have the Holy Ghost, I cry out for the Holy Ghost. The time for you to cry out for God. It's now. The prophetic alignment is perfectly aligned. Everything that we see 
prophetically that was spoken, we see it in this day. They will be forbidden to marry. Teachers abstain from meat. People that have itching ears, heap into themselves teachers to feed them only what they want to hear. Everything that we can read in that Bible, we see it today. Which lets us know the coming of the Lord is closer than we even can believe. Any day now, the Lord can descend. There's not much love, y'all, prophetically, that needs to be fulfilled. Read that Bible, everything, except for just a few things, has not yet come to pass. There will be wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes and pestilence. You see it all this stuff. There's iniquity about the love of many shall wax cold. We're seeing hatred and we're seeing all this stuff. We don't have law. For the coming of the Lord. Let's get our houses in order. And I might go before you go, and I might go before the coming of the Lord, but I will not cease to warn. You got to get your houses in order. <laughs> Somebody will be caught on the way. So catch you like a thief in the night. You will not be prepared to meet your God. While you have the opportunity, while you have the time. Do it now. Most gracious and eternal God. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, we thank you for the wind that is blowing. Thank you for the eyes to see. The spirit to feel. The season is changing. Thank you for seeing the fulfillment of your word. The prophetic alignment has taken place. Things have come into order. Lord, we pray today that you will prepare us. Prepare us in this house. All that your word has spoken. As we see the assemblies fading away, turning away the ears from the truth. In this house, give us a love for the truth. Even the truth about ourselves. God, let us see ourselves. Yes, Lord. That whatever's not like you in us, God will repent of it. Turn away from it. Forsake it. Give us a love for the truth. Don't let our ears become dull for hearing. But give us an, an enthusiasm and a zeal to hear your word. To receive your word. That your word may penetrate our hearts. Never let us become comfortable. Especially as we see all that your word has revealed. Grant unto us a praying spirit. Lord, 
in these days that has flood the altar with tears. Let's occupy the altar until you come. We may cry out to you. We may intercede. Let us raise up a voice of intercession from this place. Oh. Reveal more to us. Show us more. But we know as your word said, to whom much is given, much is required. So Lord, let us meet the requirements. What you reveal. Take us higher and deeper in you. Open your word unto us even the more. Anoint the ministers in it. Anoint them, God, from the top of the head to the sole of their feet, from the inside out. Let me preach your word with power and boldness. Let me declare your truth. Let your word be like a fire that come out of our mouths that will consume everything that's not like you. And it may burn away everything that is not pleasing in your sight. Set our souls on fire. Baptize us again. A precious gift from the Holy Ghost. Set a revival in our soul. Fill us up the more. And when we felt like we got enough, God, give us more. More of your power, more of your anointing. Double up your spirit. Bring to our soul more conviction. That we may feel when we're going off course. That your spirit would bring us back. Do it for us and we give you glory. Rebuke the hand of the enemy. God rebuke the hand of the enemy. Overdoop the head of the enemy. Give us your servants the boldness to address every contrary spirit. The spirit that is not like you. Give us the ability to no longer tolerate it, but cast out every spirit. In the name of Jesus. As the world is shifting, shift the church. Shift the church. Make the broad ready. There are people all over the world. Make the broad ready. from this part of the service.